Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Friday, which means it's time for a new how to base. And today, I'll show you how to make this base and turn it into this base. As you can probably guess, this is a bit, this is more sort of more of the same of what I've been talking about recently and in my last couple of how to bases, but this is actually adds a, a bit a couple of a couple of twists. Not the least of which being that the original sound was made with toxic biohazard, which was actually a suggestion made uh, by the Ardeka dudes. Ardeka. I believe it's supposed to be pronounced Ardeka, but I've always just called Ardeka, so I, I keep doing that. Anyway, this is part one. This is where I'll show you all the individual parameters that were necessary to create the sound, and then I'll part two will be where I go over the how and why of each individual step. Um... Part two will not be me making it from scratch because I actually had to experiment with this for a bit before I was sure that what I was doing would make sense. So, anyway, uh, the sound was, um, this was actually suggested directly by uh, Skylar from Audica. I'm pretty sure I'm saying his name right. And um, what this is, is a saw, a, a smooth square, and a square together where they're all detuned in various ways. 30, just kind of detuned. I just picked 30 in some configuration. You know, that's just what I did. Um... And then I used the built-in drive for Toxic to, to make the drive, to make the distortion. And then I, um, without without the patcher or the Maximus, this is what it sounds like. You know, pretty, pretty greasy. And then the patcher, what I did here is I, I did two things. Um, when, when, when he was presenting to me the idea of using it in Toxic, the reason why he did this is because <clears throat> he wanted to make a sound, a bandpass bass that still had... Uh, high frequency definition, and <clears throat> I did something to aid that. I made an EQ where I notched out the mids. Um, let's see, I did two EQs here. This main guy is the notch here, and and I kind of kept the highs and the lows in there to taste the, the lows for sub reinforcement. And I'm explaining myself, and then I made a bandpass, which is the second layer, and then uh, I distorted it together with a wave taper. It's kind of a little bit of saturation. And then I uh, animated. I automated the bandpass, sort of willy nilly. And then I compressed it. This is the compressor. I kind of kept the the attack and, and delay are off as as well as for every for every single thing. This is so that there's no delay when the sound is played. You can tell because in the beginning of the Edison recording, it actually begins. So then I record it in Edison. And this is here. And then I drop it into Harmer. So, as usual, I detuned it by two and put the phase up a little bit. And then I turned the phaser on and distorted it with this configuration, which actually I just realized looks is actually kind of like some sort of artistic configuration. There's also a little bit of reverb on there. Um, I created a phaser mask, which you can access through this window here. I also messed with the harmonic units and pitch, which I'll explain why when we get to the next part. Um, and I turned the sharpness down a little bit. And then, of course, distortion and the reverb, that's what happened afterwards. And that's actually more or less it. I automated the width and the offset of the phaser to get this. The MIDI note is one continuous note, so that it actually restarts um, the audio here, but it can, but the progress of the unison continues. That's more or less it for this. Um, the FLP for this will be available in the description. Check that out if you will. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about this, uh, let me know. But you can also just go to part two because I'll pretty much yammer on about all the, the details about how this works. So I will see you there. Yeah.